Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Jessalyn Zoom, Chief of the Asian and Middle Eastern Division here at the Library of Congress. It is my great honor to welcome you all to this momentous occasion. As we gather here today to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the U.S.-Korea Alliance, a very warm welcome to all the esteemed guests who are joining us from near and far. Today's symposium on reflections on the U.S.-ROK Alliance in the humanities marks a significant milestone in the history of the U.S.-Korea partnership. There will be four programs uh, or presentations. Each will be 30 to 40 minutes, uh, followed by a moderator-led Q&A session. I think we have one or two mics uh, that will be part passing around for in-person questions. Virtual attendees, please use chat to send in questions and comments throughout the presentations. On behalf of the planning committee, I would like to thank the Korean Library Association for their enthusiastic involvement and a generous financial support to make the event possible. Thanks also go to, first on the Korean guest side, uh, Korean Cultural Center, Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism of the Republic of Korea. And on the library side, the Asian Division, Veterans History Project, Special Events Office, and um, Multimedia Group, an Office of Communications um, here at the Library of Congress for their support and participation. Last but not least, I would like to express our deepest gratitude to the brave men and women who have served and continue to serve in the armed forces of the United States and the Republic of Korea. Well, I think now it is my pleasure to introduce the president of Korean Library Association, Dr. Yang Jun Nam. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Yang Jun Nam and I am the president of the Korean Library Association. I am delighted to start the uh, inaugural international leg of the KLA's key initiative, the Humanities on the Road program in the United States, our strategic ally. As the president of KLA, I proposed and uh, designed this overseas program with the support of Korean Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism. Though this program, I wanted to show the Korean immigrants in the United States that their motherland has now become a cultural icon globally they can be proud of. I also wanted to show the Americans that we remember the critical support the United States provides during some of the most challenging period in South Korea. The Korea and the United States alliance is not only about the military and the economy, but also about the culture. The academic fields of liberal science in Korea was started in 1957 by the faculty of Joji Peabody College. The United States was instrumental in the advancement of the field of library science, which makes the 70th anniversary of the Korean Uni Korea United States Alliance all the more special. Humanists on the road seeks to promote the core value of the humanity field, that is happiness. Democracy is underpinned by the right to the pursuit of happiness and the freedom. As a defender of democracy, the Korea United States, United States Alliance defends Korea's democracy from communism. And that is why we are starting the Humanities on the Road program in the United States. This program 
would not have been possible without support of many people. I would like to thank uh, Jesarlin Jum, uh, Chief of the Asian and the Middle Eastern Division, Robin Dale, Depu Deputy Librarian of the Library of Congress, for supporting us with the amazing venue. Kwon Sejung, Korean Embassy of uh, Minister, and uh, Dr. Stella Su, uh, Megan Harris, Owen Rogers, Professor Jung Jae Chan, and uh, Joseph Chun for their speaker series. Also, a special thanks you to Young Shim Lee and Ellie Kim for coordinating the events of a tight schedule. And uh, Kim Jong Un, director of the Korean Consulting Center at Washington, D.C., and uh, lastly to everyone who supported this program along the way. I hope that today's service is the starting point to celebrate the 100th anniversary and the many more of the Korea-United States Alliance, and hope you enjoy the program. Thank you. Please join me in welcoming Robin Dale, Deputy Librarian for Library Collections and Services Group, for the opening remarks. Good morning. Uh, I'd like to welcome our distinguished guests, presenters, and attendees, both in person and virtual. It's an honor to be here with you today to celebrate this important milestone, the 70th anniversary of the United States-Korea Alliance, a partnership that's endured and flourished over the last seven decades. 70 years ago, the United States and the Republic of Korea forged a bond that was rooted in shared values, common goals, and a commitment to defend freedom and democracy. Since its inception, the U.S.-Korea alliance has been instrumental in promoting security, peace, and prosperity in the region and around the world. Through the military and diplomatic cooperation, we've successfully preserved stability and integrity for the interest of our nations. The alliance has had a profound impact on the bilateral relationship and strengthened the friendship of our two great nations. Throughout the years, our partnership has expanded beyond the realm of security into economic cooperation and cultural exchange. The cultural programs, such as the event here today, bring together scholars, educators, artists, and the public to enrich the mutual understanding and deepen the, the commitment and shared values that we hold dearly. The Library of Congress is well suited to co-host this event along with our colleagues at the Korean Library Association. As the oldest federal cultural institution of the nation, the Library of Congress plays a significant role in supporting and promoting the humanities. For more than two centuries, it's strived to fulfill one sacred mission, to build and preserve the world's largest collection of human knowledge. And I would add, to make that available as well. The library is home to more than 170 million, excuse me, 175 million items in more than 470 languages uh, in virtually all formats and subjects. Unlike other national libraries, the Library of Congress collects in all languages from around the world, making it a valuable institution for anybody interested in learning about the world and cultural heritage. The library's extensive collections provide a wealth of resources for scholars, researchers, educators, and students in the study of humanities. The collections include a vast array of books and manuscripts, photographs, recordings, and other materials. In particular, the library maintains and preserves valuable historic and original documents, published works, some artwork, and all kinds of artifacts that contribute to our understanding of history and the humanities. The library also hosts various literary and cultural programs that celebrate and explore the humanities. These programs include uh, such things as the Poet Laureate program we have here, uh, the Gershwin Prize for Popular Song, uh, even the recent Library of Congress Festival in Film and Sound, and other lectures, book talks, exhibits, and special events. 
The library also collaborates with scholars and researchers, universities, and cultural institutions to support research, fellowships, and humanities-related initiatives. For example, we have uh, an extensive scholars in residence at the John W. Kluge Center, which is just on the other side of this wall here from us, uh, here at the library, as well as fellowships uh, in different and I should say multiple divisions across the library, including the Asian Division, the Prints and Photograph Division, even the Preservation Directorate, uh, and the American Folklife Center. So a, div a diverse and rich kind of sets of fellowships we offer here. The Library Collections and Services Group serves the nation's and the library's universal collection. And our core mission is to acquire, describe, preserve, and share our national collection in all formats. And as I mentioned earlier, as of our last annual report, we now have more than 175 million items within the collection. As the library has transformed throughout the digital age, we've not only digitized countless collections, but we're actually actively collecting digital content as a part of our ever-changing collection. Most of our digitized collections are freely available via the library's website, uh, and we you do that in order to support research and teaching and learning. Uh, additionally, a growing number of digital books, serials, newspapers, manuscripts, and other content, some of which have rights restrictions, are available in our reading rooms through our secure and rights restricted system called Stacks. That's available in all of our reading rooms across the library. And finally, of course, being here today, I must mention the library's unparalleled Korean collection. Despite a relatively late start to the systematic collection development of Korean materials at the outbreak of the Korean War in 1950, the Korean collection at the library is now the largest and most comprehensive outside of Korea. More than 445,000 45, volumes of monographs and over 8,600 serial titles. The collection comprises publications from the 20th century to the present, but also holds a number of valuable pre-20th century publications in traditional formats. It covers all subject areas from the arts and humanities to the social and natural sciences and includes the Korean diaspora publications from around the world. The Korean Rare Book Collection comprises some 650 titles and over 3,500 volumes some of which have been digitized and are available on the library's website. Some of the library's rare materials are fine specimens of early printing with woodblock and movable metal type. And you may have heard of um, or are actively involved in the From Jikji to Gutenberg project. And on April 13th and 14th, the library hosted From Jikji to Gutenberg, the scholarly colloquium. As a part of this larger project that was ongoing, and to discuss the latest research in early metal type printing and elaborate on the invention of printing. Jikji, printed in 1377 in the Cheongju, South Korea, is recognized by UNESCO as the oldest known book in the world and that is printed with movable type. So I'd like to end by sharing a quote from our own director of preservation, Jake Nadal, that he made at that colloquium. The story of Jikji and Gutenberg is a compelling story of how human creativity can flourish along similar lines in different times and places, and is a powerful statement about our common desire to disseminate our ideas to the betterment of all. Congratulations to the 70th anniversary, and I wish you all a wonderful and successful conference. Thank you. It is now my distinguished honor to introduce Dr. Se Chung Kwan, Minister and Consul General, Embassy of the Republic of Korea. And if I may, um, hear a little bit of bio of Dr. Kwan. Dr. Se Chung Kwan is a career diplomat and currently serves as the Minister and Consul General in the Embassy of the Republic of Korea in Washington, D.C. He has held various positions in diplomacy, including Ambassador for Arctic Affairs, 
and Director General for the Climate, Environment, and Scientific Affairs Bureau. Dr. Kwan has expertise in uh, policy analysis, protocol, and foreign policy strategy formulation. He has served in diplomatic positions in Kazakhstan and China. Additionally, Dr. Kwan has experience in environmental cooperation and climate change, having played a role in formulating Korea's position within the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. He has also worked at the Global Green Growth Institute, contributing to its transformation into an international organization. Dr. Kwan holds a PhD in political science from Kyungnam University, a Master of Law from Northwestern University, and a Diploma of Higher European Studies from the Paris Institute of Political Studies. He is fluent in English with intermediate proficiency in Chinese and French. Since assuming her, his current position in 2020, Dr. Kwan has been dedicated to promoting the well-being of Koreans in the United States and strengthening the U.S.-Korean uh, alliance. His keen attention to the Korean collection in the library reflects his efforts to enhance understanding and appreciation of Korean culture among Americans. Please welcome Dr. Kwan. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. It's a little exaggeration, but thank you so much for introducing myself. Um, yeah, I need some uh, glasses. Yeah, I'm very pleased to be here and honored, but I'm not, I'm not sure that I, can, I deserve uh, this position. Anyway, I try my, uh, do it myself. And as you know, uh, this year marks 70th anniversary of the Korea-U.S. alliance, uh, ending the Korean War, and also um, the 120th anniversary of Korean immigration to the United States of America. And now, today, uh, is very pleased to, uh, to be here to celebrate uh, the, uh, the 10th anniversary of Humanities on the Road programs in D.C., especially in Washington, D.C., in our uh, Library of Congress, and to look back on the past seven years and also envision a new future, better future for our uh, two countries. And in this sense, I'd like to thank uh, the uh, Library of Congress, Korean Library Association, Library of Congress, and also Minister of uh, Culture, Sports, and Tourism, and also other uh, organizations, and also uh, the staff of the library and all the people, all the participants here together. And uh, for the first, uh, you know, starting my uh, speech, uh, I would like to think about the uh, alternative history. That means, you know, history do not, does not know conditionality or hypothesis. But uh, if we go back to 120 years, 140 years ago, uh, what vision, what dream, or what imagination we, we have, we had for the uh, relations of the two countries. And I am thinking that at the time, uh, if the United States uh, picked a Korea as major partner uh, like Japan, then I think history could then change it. And also, if Korea uh, could think about uh, where, uh, the, uh, the well understand the international uh, security environment or international political landscape. And also the US also uh, paid more attention to Korea uh, in a general context of uh, world uh, politics. Then I think we could think about the more different history. Maybe more perhaps I think that uh, we could better uh, deter uh, Russian expression Russian expansion, and also uh, prevent Japanese militarism, and also the empire uh, invasion, and also the communism of China. Maybe it is better environment for us. Because uh, now we, we uh, should think about this, because uh, we should, we, 
it's us, it's we that make our history. And they're saying that the best way to predict history is make it. That is, that means uh, it's important to think about how to um, come up with uh, the dreams and imagination uh, for their making history. And it is all the more important to, uh, to pay emphasis on the, the uh, humanitarian thinking and humanitarian imagination. And uh, in a sense, I think uh, for the last past 140 years, we can divide into half, a first half and latter half. And first half of 70 years is very dark history, I think. And Korea uh, experienced a, um, a collapse of regime and also experienced colonialism. And also we uh, faced destiny of devastation of Korean War. And many people suffered. And the Korean destiny was um, with big trauma and big scars for us. And now, after seven years, the latter half of seven years, we forged the alliance with the United States and a new, uh, you know, new shining history for us. And we uh, sta uh, stabilized the Korean Peninsula. And also, we, uh, it, bring, it brought us prosperity, peace and prosperity in the, uh, Northeast Asia and beyond the region. And we successfully deterred North Korean aggression. And also, we, our values, common values of freedom, democracy, uh, peace and uh, human rights and market economy was flourished that based on the common vision and goal of Korea and U.S. So uh, I think uh, many people uh, have sacrificed for this uh, prosperity. I can think of uh, missionaries like Underwood, Appenzella, and also the uh, noble uh, educators and pioneers like Herbert and also the other uh, doctors and uh, medical doctors and scientists, and also uh, unknown soldiers, and also Peace Corps members. All the people uh, contributed to the uh, strengthening uh, the relations between the two countries, and also peace and prosperity in the peninsula and Northeast Asia. And so to today's session, especially uh, missionaries, uh, traces of missionaries and war, and the, uh, the Korean diaspora are very important to think about our better future, think about the how to envision our future together so we can make our history together. But now, um, uh, in Korea, after the Korean War, we, uh, our uh, uh, income only less than $100, but now more than $30,000. But not only Korea has uh, grown as a, uh, grown as a economic powerhouse, but also cultural power, powerhouse that, as you know, the Korean pop culture and Korean, Korean brand, uh, cinemas and dramas uh, gained pop popularity worldwide. And also the, um, nowadays, the uh, autobi uh, autobiographic uh, essays and novels uh, from the uh, immigration, immigra immigration families and also the uh, um, international uh, married families are also the Korean adoptees. They also they are, play their role to play for the, uh, the future of the two countries. Uh, for example, as you know, the Pachinko, the, the novel of Lee Min Jin, is also uh, played, uh, gained acclaim from the literary circle, but also is very popular in Korea and the US. It's a big uh, resonance. Uh, so there is a sensation, I think. And also, uh, we can think about uh, also the Crying in the H Mart by Michelle Zauner. Her, her mother was Korean American, and also father was uh, American American. And, and then uh, this novel, also the um, big uh, resonance on the uh, American people, uh, but also Korean people together, and it's a big influence to young generation. And my, my daughter, uh, she's a graduate, uh, now is an undergraduate student, also, she uh, read uh, Crying Age Mart, and so she, she told me that a very touching story. And also, um, um, you can uh, also, uh, uh, it, um, you know, my mind also, um, I you know, remember uh, the, the story, the novel, that uh, also the, it touches upon the Korean 
modern Korean history. Uh, that is one of them is a uh, uh, Pearl Buck uh, published a novel, uh, The Living Read, in 1963. And this story is about uh, 19th century and early 20th centuries. Uh, the trauma in Korea, uh, the four generations in Korean Peninsula, they, um, they overcome and also they uh, dealt with uh, the distorted uh, perspectives on the Korean Korea that there is good uh, the way of uh, telling story of Korean history. And also uh, the, the similar period, uh, the, the martyr by Kim Eun-guk, eun -guk Kim, is also uh, touched upon the Korean, Korean War. And then so it, uh, story, story was focusing on the, uh, the seeking uh, relief uh, based on the uh, overcoming despair on the Korean War traces. And now we can, I, I, I cannot forget to tell about the Korean diaspora. Uh, here, Dr. Uh, Director Koo Seok Jun is here. Uh, he, his his uh, uh, cinema especially pay attention to the Korean American, uh, Korean diaspora. His first novel, his first uh, movie is Jerenimu, right? Jerenimu is a, a story about uh, Koreans uh, uh, living in Cuba. So Korean people also entered Cuba, and they, one of them, the Jeronimo, uh, he participated in uh, changing uh, Cuban, his, Cuban society. And here in the United States, um, in, in 1903, one, one or two people, uh, two workers, uh, they started working in a sugar plantation in Hawaii. And now, three years later, uh, 7,000 people, 7,000 workers lived in Hawaii. And now, uh, more than 2.6 uh, uh, 2, 2 million Korean Americans are living in the United States. So they have contributed to strengthening Korea's relations, also uh, making the US society better. So I, in a sense, I would like to uh, thank all the Korean American people's contribution to the United States. And, um, and um, so in this history, uh, the many relations between Korea and US, uh, not only state-to-state -state relations, but also people-to-people -people relations uh, gather their, their energy to change our history. And so in a sense, I think uh, the, uh, the exchange and uh, the uh, communication and they're sharing their feelings, sharing their values, sharing their culture. It's very all the more important because we need another new history for another 70 years of alliance. And in a sense, I think creative thinking and imagination, uh, we should educate, we should lead the young generation to think about more creative uh, way. And then in a sense, I think uh, the humanity, humanity Korean programs, humanities will contribute to their expanding their horizon, intellectual horizon, and uh, psychologically and other uh, in many areas. And in this regard, I think uh, today's program, um, the humanities on the road, uh, it was designed under on the leg of uh, commemorating uh, 70 years anniversary of Korea's alliance, but also it also deeply connected with uh, 120 years of uh, Korean American immigration history in the United States. And in a sense, I think three sessions will be very important. And I think listen carefully. And also, we it's very good momentum and good, good time to think about uh, the, uh, the, the look back on the past and take stock of what we have done and uh, what should we prepare for the next uh, future of the two countries. And, um, and also, I think that our relations of the two countries were uh, up level and then upgrade to another level. And then that, it depends on your efforts. And I hope that all the people uh, participating here or uh, the people who did not participate over here, all together, I think we better make a better future. So now is the time to make our history. That is the best way to predict the future history. So thank you very much. Yeah.
wanted to say that we have received a heartfelt message from Song Byung Jun, president of Korean War Veterans uh, Association of Washington, D.C. Uh, due to health reasons, Mr. Song is not able to join us in person, uh, but he sent his warmest wishes for a successful symposium and expressed his thanks to all who's involved in organizing the symposium. Um, so I'll translate, or I'll, yeah, translate a little bit of what uh, he wished to say to us. Um, President Song Byung Jun is deeply thankful for the recognition and remembrance bestowed upon the Korean War veterans. He hopes that the event will provide a meaningful and enriching experience to all participants, fostering a deeper understanding and appreciation of the Korean War veterans, their sacrifices and bravery. I think that's really fitting for today's conference. And if I may, um, let's take a moment to acknowledge the heartfelt message from President Song Byung Jun. And I hope uh, we will um, meet up his, uh, his expectation uh, to make this event a memorable tribute to the Korean War veterans.